For me, the PCT has always been about love. Not in the big romantic sense, but in a subtle knowing that over time crept into my bones and settled. I'm Hannah, and I decided to hike the Pacific Crest Trail in 2022. Whenever a stranger asks me how it went, I push myself to avoid a one-word answer, and instead, I end up saying, it was all of the things. They usually have no idea what to ask next, and the topic changes. So here I am to tell you a little bit more than that about my first through hike The idea started a year before I stepped into the sand at the California-Mexican border. A month after I had turned 25, the person I planned to spend my life with broke up with me, and a month later, I graduated university. And shortly after that, I found myself struggling to find a goal to hold on to. I was stunned by the breakup. I had worked so hard to build a life for two people and became confused by the idea of me as an individual outside of a relationship. I didn't recognize myself in this pain. I'd always seen myself as the strong, confident woman who's moved to new countries twice, traveled solo, and gone on many wilderness backpacking trips. I was numb, and I didn't know where to look for answers, but what I did know is that I wanted time and space to think it all through. A lot of space. I'd been living in London for over two years during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns, which had swept billions of people into hospitals and homes. After isolation and so many Zoom meetings, navigating social dynamics again was challenging for me. I hadn't made or met a new friend in years. The PCT starts at the U.S.-Mexican border and meanders 2,650 miles through deserts and mountains to the U.S.-Canadian border. It traverses three states and 48 wilderness areas. The trail has a total elevation change, equivalent to hiking Mount Everest 14 times, a fact that I didn't learn until I reached the end of my hike in Washington. And if at the start, in Campo, California, I had understood the sheer enormity of what I was about to attempt, I may not have started at all. The first week taught me a lot. I started in leather boots, carrying the luxury of 17 colorful pens for my journal, and accidentally brought enough food to last me two weeks. Day one was the heaviest my pack ever was. Perfectly warm, fed, and safe in my tent at night, my mind was flooded with comparisons to other hikers and overwhelmed by the choices I had to make alone to survive the next day. I'm feeling a little low. I was logging 15 to 20 miles a day, waking in the dark to beat the heat, taking midday siestas under chaparral bushes, and getting into camp, feet aching and slightly dehydrated. Just after the 100 mile marker, I camped at a spot with 15 other hikers. That night, I met Seaweed, Seabiscuit, and Scout. As soon as I met them, they felt familiar. They were kind and inviting, and I felt a sense of calm inside myself when I was around them. As I drifted off to sleep that night, listening to a chorus of frogs, I hoped that I would become friends with them. Instantly, we were hiking at the same pace, helping each other work through decisions about tent sites, shade spots, or water sources, and laughing about finding cheese in our belly buttons or hiking back uphill to eat a stranger's fallen jelly bean out of the dirt. Three days after meeting them at a pizzeria in Idlewild, these three gave me my trail name. I was now the Jolly Jelly Bean, AKA JJ Bean. The name seemed to give me permission to be the truest version of myself. The things Hannah would only think of, JJ Bean acted on. I felt a release to try new things, think bigger thoughts, and act boldly. I could be a free, grubby wanderer without it impacting this facade Hannah had built for society.
Scout was a speedy hiker and I didn't see him after Idlewild, although he would relay helpful trail information back to us as he hiked ahead. Seaweed and Seabiscuit are childhood friends with electric personalities, radiating positivity and curiosity. Seaweed is a mighty and fearless soul with a deep desire to feel the space around herself and fill it with kindness. Seabiscuit is a cowboy reincarnated, shockingly brave and thoughtful, both methodical and hilarious. Seaweed, Seabiscuit and I began to spend entire days together. Our life stories, which had been so starkly separate before this point, began to blend together. Other through hikers called us the Sea People. Days felt like weeks and weeks felt like a day. There were nature-made hot springs and man-made Gatorade left in coolers by strangers. Trail magic. Trail magic is any form of generosity gifted by what through hikers call trail angels. And this kindness, which would often bring me to tears, could appear in many forms. Food, a cold drink, or a ride into town. May 18th. I lay in the dirt under Interstate 10, the only patch of shade in a 30 mile stretch while a stranger dribbled ice cubes across my forehead. I'd been rationing my food and water when a trail angel named Mama Bear arrived and filled our bellies with hot dogs, watermelon, and soda. We needed to get to some place called the Wind Farm to sleep that night, but it was still too hot to hike. Time was moving, but the heat wasn't dissipating. It felt like we were going towards midday instead of away from it. A hiker named Choo Choo declared from the abandoned sofa he was laying across, the time of day is broken. By mile 500, the novelty of backpacking every day had worn off. I felt normal and comfortable. The LA Aqueduct, a 30 mile stretch of desert just west of Lancaster, felt like the final exam of the desert section and one of the most iconic parts of the PCT. Hikers talk about it for weeks leading up to and reminisce about for months on trail after. The aqueduct has no water or shade, so people usually hike it at night. At midnight, Seaweed, Seabiscuit, and I set out from Hiker Town, dripping in glow sticks and weighed down by miscellaneous stacks and beer. By 1 a.m., we were walking on the pipeline, and by 3 a.m., we were laying on cement slabs, watching the moon set and admiring the Milky Way. The whole day felt like a movie. Stopping for breakfast while the sun rose, I ate a cheese stick, a protein bar, coffee, and sour Skittles. We did 23 miles before noon that day and kept hiking. I felt delirious and wonderful. The time of day is definitely broken, we said to each other as we fell asleep at 2 p.m. to the sound of a hiker named Mozart playing his guitar. Exam completed. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. After a quick rest in Kennedy Meadow South, a celebration for Seabiscuit's birthday and a new haircut, one Hannah had dreamed of and JJ being executed, we swapped the challenge of long water carries for the weight of a bear can, geared up for elevation and more unpredictability. Off we went, into the Sierras. Five days in, we found ourselves trying to outrun a storm in order to summit the highest point in the lower 48 states, Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney is just off the PCT, a day excursion not to be missed. After many satellite weather checks and a 24 mile day to get us to the base, we started our alpine summit at 2 a.m. with clear skies. Then it began to snow. Cautiously checking in with each other every switchback, we continued up the mountain. Even after the snow started, it briefly stopped before we summited in a blizzard. <laughs> we made it to the top! 
micro spikes on, we safely made it back to our soaked tents and took naps while trying to dethaw our toes and warm up. At 5 p.m., we awoke to a clear and sunny afternoon. It felt like the eight hours we had spent in the blizzard was worlds away. Each day in the Sierras was a roller coaster of emotions and of terrain, tearing me down and building me up at the same time. They were by far my most challenging days on trail, and if my days hadn't been dictated by thoughts of food before the Sierras, it was solidified now. Hiker hunger was real, and I struggled to carry and consume enough food. Physically, it was more difficult, and mentally, I had to consciously convince myself out of negative feedback loops. I had lots of conversations in my head. I was still processing, still questioning my life and what I wanted my future to look like. I listened to music and podcasts about Roe versus Wade being overturned. I was emotional and I worried I wasn't soaking in my surroundings. I wanted to do this section justice and I wanted to enjoy it. But soon I realized that feeling everything deeply is the most present version of myself. Through hiking offers a type of absolute and utter freedom. Carrying everything you need to live on your back can be liberating, and you start to value the worth of the possessions you choose to take and the people you surround yourself with. Backpacking gave me the time and space to think, for hours and days and months, about what I wanted for myself and who I wanted to be. In this warp time, I fell in love again, something I thought impossible. I fell in love with seaweed and sea biscuit the purest of love, a platonic friendship. It had been one year since my breakup, one year I had spent making tough decisions alone, and it dawned on me that I had shut down emotionally. Heartbreak made me scared to feel anything, and this friendship with my sea people began to pry me open again. Through many conversations, they taught me that just because the love between my ex and I didn't last doesn't mean it was a failure. I will always have the memories and lessons from that relationship and I made room in my heart to let the love of the past live next to the grief of its ending. I passed the thousand mile marker just miles after leaving Yosemite National Park. Again and again in my journal I write, I am happy out here. And again and again, I keep hiking north. Kennedy Meadow North, Sonora Pass, marks the official end of the Sierra section. We'd climbed a pass a day, gotten through the snowfields and river crossings, and it felt like anything was possible. Town days spent navigating ordered chaos were rarely restful, and instead left me overwhelmed and exhausted. So it was resupply days, like Kennedy Meadow North, more of a community than an official city that began to be my favorites. Back on trail, our group continued north from the Sierras through desolation wilderness and into the landscape scarred by previous wildfires. We began hearing of new fires breaking out in Oregon, closing sections of trail. High winds blew smoke hundreds of miles across parts of the trail that were still open, leaving air quality too dangerous to hike in. In Northern California, we hopped in my dad's car for a safety skip around the Dixie Burn from the year before. This is when we got news of the McKinney Fire. The McKinney Fire would become California's largest wildfire of 2022 and led to a closure around the California-Oregon border. This was the pre-planned end of Seaweed and Seabiscuit's trip, but still, the wildfire meant that they would have to stop even sooner than they had anticipated. For me, it was a landmark I had been dreaming of for months. The abrupt ending to their time on trail pushed me to be more appreciative of the time I had left. I needed to come to terms with the fact that completing this adventure might look different in reality than my mind's eye. I started to realize that hiking 2,650 miles and hiking the PCT safely were different goals. 
After a town stop in Bernie and one last night camping together, I hiked away from my little trail family and all the comforts and joys of their companionship. I finished hiking my home state of California the same way I had started, heartbroken and solo. Fear was once again the biggest obstacle in my path. By now I knew I was physically capable. I was determined to get to Canada. But one question remained, could I do it alone? I met my dad between the train tracks and a creek near the town of Dunsmere, north of the Shasta Trinity Forest. I think I smell so bad that for the first time, I don't smell you because I smell worse. <laughs> and after a shower and a good meal, he drove me into my next chapter, Oregon. In Oregon, I began hiking my biggest mile days yet, covering a marathon over 26 miles a day. I love the reflection of myself I began to see on trail, my ability to safely push myself mentally and physically. Canada was getting closer, faster. I spent days without any human interaction, and then I arrived at Crater Lake, where there was a tourist bonanza. There were hundreds of shining cars, and I went in search of an ice cream bar and was jostled in a too tightly packed souvenir shop. The smell of laundry detergent and clean humans made my nose twitch. The next day, Annie, my friend from high school, met me on the side of the highway with a car full of snacks and a bouquet of my favorite flowers. Annie was going to hike with me for a week. We drove around multiple active wildfire closures up to Portland and then got a ride from Lori, my friend Kate's mom, and her friend Penn. I felt grateful for the amazing support team I had, and I realized maybe I'm not so alone out here after all. With Annie on trail, I was always entertained. From games to songs to moss mustaches and chats about gender and queerness, it felt so comfortable having them there. The sense of ease I felt with Annie ironically came with the realization that what I was doing was hard. My new normal had become walking from sunup to sundown, consuming food as fuel and creating subconscious routines to keep myself and all my little items unlost. In Oregon, I began to realize the importance of balance. You can't have love without heartbreak. Without my previous week feeling lonely and bored, I wouldn't have appreciated the week with Annie so much. It made me examine the worth in having a companion on trail. I'm so grateful to Annie for taking the time to come hike with me. I realized I didn't want to live life numb and shutting out love for the fear of losing it wasn't the answer either. Walking over Bridge of the Gods and into Washington felt surreal. A large part of me didn't think I was gonna make it this far. There I was, solo again, but so calm, happy, and determined to get to the terminus just four weeks and 500 miles away. I was radically aware of how fleeting each moment was and somehow felt nostalgic for the days I hadn't even lived yet. My fire skip landed me in a foreign social scene and I began hiking in a bigger group than ever before, so big that we were filling tent sites. In Trout Lake, my favorite resupply town of trail, I will add, we decided to attempt a PCT challenge. 12 beers in 12 hours over 12 miles. Getting drunk at 9 a.m. and filling my water bottles with beer before hiking out, I found myself thinking, the time of day feels pretty broken. Sparkles, Scorpion Queen, Cool Rocks, and I became a trail family of four. Sparkles would play the song Teenage Dirtbag from her phone speakers approximately 18 times a day, so we became the self-proclaimed Teenage Dirtbags. Hiking with this new group felt different than hiking with my sea people, but it felt right to be traveling in a trail family again. I never wanted to hike the PCT alone, but I didn't want being alone to stop me from attempting it. I believe in each section of trail that I moved through, I met the people I was supposed to find, and in their own ways, they each taught me how to love living life again.
you. Try it sometime. <laughs>September 10th, 199 miles to the border of Canada and the realities of the fires became all too real. Southbound hikers warned us about the Bolt Fire. It had started that morning and was just a couple ridgelines away. Cautiously, I slept by a lake and woke at 3 a.m. to hike to Highway 2, a silent, barren, six-lane highway. Luckily, one car leaving a trailhead gave Sparkles and I a 40-minute ride east to Leavenworth. Holed up in a hotel, nursing my third bowl of cereal and surrounded by my dirt bags, I realized that my time hiking north on the PCT in 2022 was over. This decision pulled on my heartstrings. I didn't want it to end like this. I didn't want to get this close and not finish. Making this video and realizing how abruptly my journey ended and how close I was to the finish line makes me hurt all over again. Five, four, there is a saying, the trail provides, and here it was, one last time, providing us with the lesson that it was never about the destination, it was always about the journey. The PCT is a place of utter wonderment, sheer emotions, and a chaos that makes me feel like time itself has broken open. With the goal to complete 2,000 miles, I flipped down to Ashland, Oregon with Cool Rocks to hike south in the section that was closed for the McKinney Fire. I was hiking towards home now, and hoping to find closure in these last miles. Just months earlier in Northern California, I had experienced my hottest temperatures on trail. This time, I experienced my coldest, with snowstorms and days of chilling rain. With fading daylight hours, Mama Earth beckoned my time on the PCT to a close and ushered in a new season for nature and myself. September 25th. I was in my last stretch of trail between Etna and Dunsmuir when my mentor, Terry Schneider, a coach, professional triathlete, and a PCT through hiker from the year before, texted me. It is easy to forget how epic it is to hike the trail, how resilient you are despite fatigue and aches and pain. Take a moment to celebrate your strength. got something on my mind that I need to say with my heart far gone. Love's been hard to find. No the Pacific Crest Trail was my chrysalis, a home I built for myself where the world changed within me and I emerged resilient, strong, and brave. Backpacking for five months straight, I'm aware of how capable I am to move forward through tough emotions and obstacles. This journey didn't look or feel the way I had imagined it, and it wasn't always picture perfect or positive. As with love, just because it is over sooner than expected doesn't mean that I failed. It broke my heart to say goodbye to JJ Bean, but I know I will carry a part of her with me. And knowing the trail is always there to return to makes me feel whole again. Summer pretty lover tried to Understand things have changed, can't stay the same. I'm a different man, said goodbye too many times. Now we're far apart. Oh, summer pretty lover, don't you break my heart?